Good afternoon, traders, and welcome to a Friday edition of AwesomeCallsTrading.com live webinar video recap. I want to join you. I want to thank you for joining us. I'm AJ. I'll be your host for the next 15, 20 minutes. Um, just want to express uh, what a wonderful day today was. If you didn't get the day, chance to day trade because you were busy, uh, doing whatever it is that you had to do. Um, you missed a really wonderful day to trade. Uh, the market was really easy to read today uh, for us in this great room. Uh, very easy to understand. Uh, great plays all around. Um, uh, I just, I was really, really, really happy today with uh, today's selection of trades that we did. You know, it's interesting. I go around Twitter and I see people going, oh, I'm so happy I'm in cash. Or I'm so happy I didn't trade today. Or there was really nothing out there and it's like you know it, it i just kind of laugh i smile and i think inexperience 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 this isn't a trader this is a salesman this is a salesman this is not a trader and you know for me i i never look at an excuse um i think that's one of the things that i i kind of build my reputation on is i don't i don't get um i don't have excuses I just don't. I just, if I miss a trade, it's because, you know, there was maybe too many great trades going on. If I miss a trade um, or I did take a trade, maybe I was a deer in headlights at the moment, but I mean, it wasn't like the play didn't work. I just, maybe I was up on another trade and I froze on that trade. I don't know, you know, but I don't, I don't make excuses not to put out good calls. And, and if you've been in this room and if you know in this chat room for the last six years that we've been going, we put 12 items together minimum. Every morning there's, I don't know, 35, 40, 50, sometimes 60 items to trade on gap up, gap downs, and uh, analyst calls, and earnings, and, and just you name it. And for me, as a day trader, I try to find and scope out the top 10 or 12 trades, ranging from $3 all the way up to, or ranging from $1 all the way up to, uh, I usually cap it around in the chat room about $300 to $400 a trade. I don't really want to go, unless you want to play options on Amazon. I mean, I could do that all day. I could look at a Google and go, this is going to go here, go here, and go here. If you want to play those 40, 50 points playing options, you can. I have a really good free read for the market, how the market's going to trend for the day. Uh, and so, But for the most part, a, to me, a typical day trader usually has in his account anywhere from a couple thousand all the way up to... I don't know, 100,000, maybe 250,000, a lot of retired guys in the room uh, people have. And then I have my, my group of people that have over a million. And then I got a small category of a guy, a couple of people uh, have one at 5 million and another client at 10 million. And they're, they, they actually manage trust accounts and uh, they trade those family accounts. So, um, so I have a diversity. And so what I try to do is just keep stocks, you know, where they're, a trader like that can buy a thousand shares of OLED or buy a thousand shares of Apple or two thousand shares of Apple and short it five points and make a quick ten grand for the account or buy puts and buy a lot of contracts. Um, and then I have the small cap guy that wants to come in and just, you know, if he can make two hundred, three hundred bucks on his five hundred to thousand dollars in the account, I have those socks too. And today I delivered, you know, um, we had a lot of range plays today. I was very pleased with the calls that I made. Uh, matter of fact, the chat room gave me 100%. Somebody gave me 110%. Two people gave me 110%, which is rare. But I did earn the 100% ticker today. And uh, the calls that we did were R-H-E-C-C, S-V-M-K, floor, pins. Uh, and a, a shout out to the great dark sign on pins. He went long uh, at the open and just stayed with it and walked it up to $35 in the chat room. Um, I didn't like the stock. Um, I thought it would cap off at 35. Uh, that was my idea right there. I think we see 35, and then we just fade it down to 30. Uh, and the stock is currently at 32.50. So I, I guess you could look at me and go, damn, that was a fucking great call. <laughs> but I think it probably shook some people out when I started at 33, because if you did start at 33 and you added to 35 and you had a 34 average, um, you would still make money because the stock came down to 32.50 and under. So. There's no reason not to make a point and a half. CDNA, NATAP, Tandem, Square, OLED, FTFT, and Biz. And I had st st uh, STK. I don't know what happened to it. STX. So, But I'll go over a few really good ones. Uh, 
or they were all good, so I could just pick any one of them. So I'll start with um, RHE. Now, RHE uh, sold three houses or three properties today, uh, totaling around $24, $30 million or whatever it was, $24.7 million. Uh, the problem is on that particular headline, what you didn't realize when you read the headline, and I'll show it to you right here, uh, was that they, they used the money to uh, pay off debt uh, to PINCONE. And uh, they also paid off a congressional bank loan in full. Okay, so when you sell something, it's like you. I'm going to sell my car so I can pay off my uh, debt over here, some of my credit cards. Okay, so does that improve your net worth? I mean, think about it simplistically. Does that improve your net worth? Are you, made, are you worth a lot more money now because you paid, you sold something? You're actually equal, right? Because you sold an asset to pay off a debt, which means now you're equal. So you have, you've, you've not done anything. And then what they were doing, is they could tell you right here, the whole point was because they wanted to pay off 25 million of concurring debt and outstanding balance sheets on stuff. That's great, all right? That doesn't mean it's all their debt. They still have more debt, but they, they wanted to settle that. So they sold three properties. Great, awesome, happy for you. That doesn't mean your market cap of your stock should be doubled. Okay, and there's no reason for the stock to even be up. So to me, RHE was a simple short. Now I know a lot of you are design your rooms to call yourself hanging fruits and 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 all this other crap and do DVDs and, and get on YouTube and show everyone how great you are and just you know it was the most amazing. I, the, the the chart showed me to short it and I caught it right there. And then of course you have to do 700 trades just to get 20 cents. In our chat room, it's it doesn't work that way. It was a call to, to short at 340, 370, any room. I told everyone, do not long the stock unless it hits 380 pop at the open with a 500 to a million buyer. If not, the stock would collapse and fail and just go simply to $2.40. As you can see, it's held at 240 ever since I called it. And I called it early this morning in pre-market. I wrote it down in pre-market, and it was right here. The stock will fade to 240 and under. So... Not in a bad call for 350. All right. All right. The next one, uh, so that was pretty easy. All right. I'm going to show you another one called Floor. Floor was a really great call today. Um, I can't really go into why I really, what language made me want to short the stock to $24 a share today. But um, to me, this stock was going to collapse all day long. It was just going to fade. You might have some bounces, but they, if you read the report the way we read it in Awesome Calls Trading, it was a pure short. It was just, there was nothing I can, I, I can't express it enough. It was one of these stocks that you just, you love how the language is said. Because as a professional day trader for 16 years, I, I look at that and I just laugh. Like, you did not just say that. You did not put that in writing. <laughs> this trade alone was like, it was like wall. I mean, and you could have, if you stayed with it all day, you could have made absolutely a killing. A trader with uh, a big account could have took 25, 35, 50,000 shares and just got four points on made 100 grand today. It's It was so predictable what the stock was going to do. It actually even did further than my 24. And I gave you the stock at a 28 entry. And because you know, I, when I, after I read it, I said, you know what, I'm going to get a quick pop at the open to 28. And then it's going to fade all the way back to lows, if not more, to 24 and under. And then watch a bottom curl. But there's been really no big curl. There was one a little bit around 23.50. But I want you to see this beautiful trade. I mean, just outstanding call today on floor. And here's floor. Again, I anticipate a pop at the open. And the reason is uh, I had my reasons. But I laid out the chart for everyone in the room, and I said, okay, watch for the pop it open, scale in, and then take it down to 24 and under. And here's 24 area. It did kind of give a little bit of a little bit of love off of that, and it just collapsed all the way down. Um, I do want to recap a little something. Um, I actually, and I haven't posted it yet, and I I won't because I've um, I was actually green today uh, on T. W O U and I'm still holding Zoo. I'm still holding this stock. Um, I'm looking for and I like how it's holding. I think Monday I'll get what I want. Um, but as you all know, I was down over a couple thousand dollars and I have a screenshot and I'm still holding the stock. 
and I owned it at $14.49, and I was up $7 right here, and I did not take it. It's a choice I made, and um, I, I think I can get a little bit higher. I have a sell order at $14.55 if it comes. Um, I just like to make 50 or 100 bucks on it because it's, it's more of an accomplishment for me of my patience. And uh, now it's nice to look at the screen and only be down three or 400 on the trade versus thousands. I'm glad that I added. I wish I could have added more on the weakness uh, because I would have had a better average and I would have already been out at it at 14. But I'm okay. I'm still continuing to hold it. I only need right now 49 cents, 50 cents. But I was... I was green in the chat room. I told everyone I'm up seven dollars and fifty-two cents from twenty. I think it was twenty-two hundred dollars. I was down, but when it gets above that and shoots on Monday, whoo! Believe me, I'll be tweeting that. Next trade we did today was a company called CC. Now, what we're learning in earnings in awesome calls trading is. Um, there's certain language that these earnings reports are really starting to put out and really emphasize. And I'm really spotting them out. I've gotten so much better as a day trader. I, I and, and these are really solid ideas where, I mean, once you read uh, the actual report, and you have to really read it. And when you're in the chat room, I actually go over why the stock is going to collapse. I actually read the headlines that create it to collapse. And today, uh, when I was reading uh, CC, I was really adamant this is a $14 stock. And I know a lot of you look at these a lot of times after the fact and go, God, I really, I really wish I could pick your brain. How you know these stocks are going to bottom out? And where do you come up with these numbers? It's so automatic. And again, it's just, it's a solid training. I mean, you know, you know when, when you love what you do, first of all, you love what you do. I love day trading. I love reading stocks. I love reading charts and i love reading news i am so what what do you think my son is so good i mean damn kid works what 80 90 hours a week you know <laughs> you know he works he works uh you know when you love what you do you can only you can only get better and what you do is you try to show the people around you look 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 this is why this is why so it becomes for you it's easy for them it needs to become memory and memory and memory and memory until you play it over and over and over and over in your head like i remember this i remember this i remember this and let me tell you something a lot of traders are really succeeding from last quarter to this quarter and it's because they understand what they're doing more and i'm telling you when you understand where our stock is going to plummet where it's going to go and why you can add more shares because you're more confident just like the boeing trade in front of all of you today i went on twitter i gave it in the chat room well, I'm, I'm buying right here. Now, I sold over, overnight. You all knew I was holding at 335.16, right? And it popped. And I told you I wanted 338. I actually sold like a dummy early. I think I sold it for two points, two and a half points to the upside. But it actually went up to 339. So today, so after I sold it, I saw it plummet again. And I saw, okay, here's my 330 entries again. So I started going long. I added to my position. I had a three, I think it was... 333 something and i put a sell order at 338 dollars and it got hit right there and you know when you know i mean i trade boeing with 100 shares i know i'm okay to risk 300 dollars on a think about it i'm buying a 300 dollars stock and my risk in my head is 300 bucks three points that's nothing on a Boeing trade. That's absolutely nothing. I, I could risk 500 and still feel the pain. But I knew, I knew Boeing has a bottom. And I know that bottom. And so I went after Boeing. And here it is. That's how you make five points. Now, I would have took 200. I would have took 40 contracts. I would have took 500 shares. What's wrong with you? You're such a slame, lame ass. You're stupid. Well, so what? what? I'm, not, I'm not here to hit a home run. My job is to be consistent, to live another day, to trade another day. That's why I do it. I love making money. So, you know, if you want to piss on my $500, fuck off. I don't care. You know, I'm just trying to show traders they can take 20 shares, 50 shares, 75 shares, 100 shares. You don't need to be a hero to make money. Five points is five points. Who else can deliver that? 
And this is just a side trade that wasn't even on my list. Okay. So I'm going to give you another one on my list. TNDM. Now TNDM was, uh, oh, let's go back to CC. So CC, I read the report today. And based on how I read and interpreted the report, I made CC our number two pick. Um, and I said that the stock will flush at the open. This is what I wrote. The stock will flush at the open to 14. And then it will bounce one to two points. It was clear as day. And I gave my reasons why the stock would pull. And it's all in the earnings report. And when you join our room, I will point these things out over and over and over to you. So when you see these, when I write in the headlines, you'll know what I'm looking for. And that's what traders, well, that's why you saw so many traders posting P&Ls in the first 30 seconds of the opening bell. They were literally done in a minute. And I'll show you why. Are you ready? So if you were in our chat room this morning and you did not act like a deer in headlights or make excuses and you simply executed trade. So basically I said the stock will flush to 14 and open. Look at where the stock is sitting. Almost $16 a share. Take 200 shares. And trust me, trust me, I will lead you. So what you do, you take 200 shares, 250 shares. You let it pop if it does. And I even tell you, if it goes to 17, it's Christmas. Add to it. Don't get scared. Don't be afraid. And within what? Four minutes and 30 seconds, it hit $14. Now, in hindsight, you're going, God damn it. Why couldn't I take that call? That's because you were a deer in headlights. You're still not understanding. You, 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 still, you still have a hard time understanding, like, how did he know that? How did he know that? You know, I've been doing this for 16 years, traders. I'm not a two-year veteran here or a rookie or a newbie out for three years and running my room. Okay? I know where the stock's going to go. I've anticipated. I've calculated. I have a method in my head. It's going to stop here and then bounce. And like I said, like fucking clockwork, it's going to stop at 14 and give you a one-point bounce. And look, there's your one-point bounce. So you could have took my 14 call and just bounced it. All right. You want another one? Here's another one. You want to see TNDM? You want to see a call? You want to see traders that just made a fortune this morning? I know one trader in our chat room and who re asked me not to post P&Ls but showed it to me, and I, I respect this person's decision. Um, he made uh, over 17000 on this trade today. He went in with size. Uh, I think it was 3,500 shares, and he nailed it. And uh, I just want to congratulate you, okay? But anyway, all he did was follow the notes. And he went in with size. He, wa he wanted to hit a home run today for Friday. And so what he did is he looked at the notes, and he, he had picked tandem because he was watching it. He's like, uh, he wrote a DM, AJ, uh, I really want something. I want to hit a home run. And I was like trying to deter him. I'm like, okay, wait for TNDM. And I, I actually wrote to him for 70 open. I felt after reading the report that the stock was they, they raised on their guidance, so I felt the stock was going to pop to 70 at the open. And once it hit that 70 area, I wanted you to nail it with size and just plummet it. And the stock was going to come all the way down to 63 and under. So he calculated in his head, well, shit, I'll probably make, I'll, I'll get five points minimum, so I'll, I'm good. So he wanted to make, I think, $15,000 today, and he actually made 17. And all he did was follow the notes. He just, he just waited. He goes, okay, I'm not going to short. I'm not going to short. I'm not going to short. And then as soon as 68, it went through, he hit 69. He started shorting positions. Um, and I was really proud of him. A lot of traders did do well on this trade, but he was so focused on this one because of the home run hit. And he actually was actually angry before he left because he could have got a little bit more. But anyway, as you see, I laid it out perfectly in the chat room. So there was two ways you could play it. If you wanted to long it, I told you it was going to. Now, I never, 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 never. One thing out of my mouth I never said was to short the stock at the open. I said long the stock to 70, scale in short at 68 to 70, have a 69 average, and pull it down to 65. And within just probably a good 45 minutes, the stock hit 65, and it actually came down to $62 a share. One of one of the finest trades and well executed, and I was really happy for Dan. It really was. The next check, uh, check. Well, it was a check if you want to put it that way. It was FTNT. 
this was a beautiful trade today. Uh, well executed, well written, uh, homework was done. This one, I read the report this morning and I was I was looking at it and I was like, you know what? Um, I haven't traded FTNT in about six months, but this was too easy to pass up. You can see the gap up here at 84 from 78. So I was excited. Um, and But after reading the report, I made the decision that the stock was going to probably most likely uh, pop at the open to $92. And if you want to look, I put it right here. Uh, the stock is gapping up nine. This will go at open to 90 to 92. So I told the traders this is going to pop. That means there's no short in the stock. You see, pop means long. It's going to pop. You know, if you're up nine, you're going to pop even more. The stock is going to pop towards 92. When it does, you can take the stock down five points or more. I see the stock heading to 83 to 84 dollars. That's what I see. Hold on a second. Okay, so that's what I see. 83 to 84 dollars, and that's what I, I anticipated. And but it would take an all-day fader um, to get there. But in the end, it was going to come down to 83 or 84 dollars. But the key thing was just to nail the short. And be patient with it. You know, a lot of us day traders, we're not patient. We want that quick money. You know, but you got to learn in here. You'll be rewarded if you patient. I mean, imagine the, if you bought 84 puts at the opening bell and it hit 92, how much money you would be up? You bought like 10 contracts, right? You see, you don't have to pay a NVIDIA or an AMD or an MU or an Apple. You can play so many different things. I'm going to give you the range. This is an eight-point trade if I if it all pans out. Now look at the stock. Ready? Ding, 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 ding. So let's say you can't short. You want a longer stock. You go 88. I'm going to give you 92. Boom. You make four points. 100 shares, $400. Done for the day. Right? You can walk away a winner. Or you could go in there and take 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 1,500, 500 shares, and hit the 92 area, start scaling in, and you drop it all the way down look at it now and you can see that the stock does truly want to hit this 85 and 84 area i want to fill this gap right here and it already just broke 80 what 86 so it's right now sitting at 85 78 89 pretty cool train huh sick huh i know it's so happy i love this shit. all right i'll give you another one well i already gave you pins i mean this was pretty easy to see I mean, I gave you 35 as a topping and scale in short and take it down. So that was that's pretty easy for me to read. I mean, that's duh. <laughs> I read that. I went, okay, this is a short at 34. You could take it 33. Um, I kept telling traders, just hang in there, hang in there. You know, give it room to 35. And Darkside uh, ran it from I think the breakout off of 33.50, and he was calling 35 up there. And then he actually told everybody it's topping now and to start selling or lead into it short. And you can just see it came all the way back down. Really great trade. Really great trade. Um, the next one we did was a company called uh, CDNA. Now, CDNA had earnings today, uh, or yesterday, I believe. And after reading the report, uh, uh, you know, it was one of those mixed ones where after I read it, I said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get most likely, I'm, okay, I'm already gapping up. You can see the gap up right here. It's clear. But I'm gapping up thin. Thin means there's not a lot of volatility on the stock in pre-market. So thin means retail is playing it. Okay, there's no funds in it. So that tells me right there, um, okay, so I'm gapping up, let's say, three points, and it's thin. So I let the traders know, because it's thin, it's still going to pop. So I'm going to scale into it short at 38 at the opening bell. When it pulls 38, it's going to slam. I think I said 33 I wanted on the stock. And uh, I'll show you what I put for everyone in the chat room. CDNA. I want a stock to pop at the open to 38 to 39. So that makes about 38.50. Then I want it to slam back down and pull under 35.50 and under. And then um, uh, and then I wanted to, to go to the upside, but the market started turning and it capped at 37. And it's just an all-day fader now on a gap fill back down to 33. So this call was really on point uh, if you wanted to make quick money. Now, a lot of you people out there don't like to play in the opening and you know 
there's a saying out there, and I, and I, I preach this all the time. People hate what they don't understand. All right, I want you to think about that for a second. Have you noticed all the hate people that hate on your calls or trades or what you did or how you traded? They don't hate you. They just simply hate what they don't understand. They can't understand how you picked that stock. They can't understand, you know, where that came from, you know, or they don't understand how you see it's going to come down. They don't understand, so they rather hate on you and make and call you names or say things or troll on you. But you can't you can't worry about what they think. You just take what's in front of you and learn from it. So if, if AJ said the stock is going to pop to 38, 39 at the open and then flush down, take the short. Wait for it, right? Now ready? Now watch. Remember I said 38 to 39? I anticipated that move. So here's a slower move here. So at the opening bell, you could have actually started short here at $38. Gave it room to 39. And now what did I say? Slam it down. Your covers would have been here, 34, 34.40, 34.80, 35.50, because I said 35.50 right there. Look at that. But in reality, some of you could have got covered right down here before the first pop at 34. You see how quickly you can make four points if you know how to read the stock? That's what I do. That's what I do. That's why we deliver hands down in this chat room. I'm going to show you another fun one before I go. NATAP. Look at NATAP, traders. Look at NATAP. Look at this baby. Cap it down. Man, they got destroyed on earnings. Destroyed. I want you to see where I called the bottom of the bounce. You're going to be shocked. You're going to be like, there's nobody that can do that. Well, we did. This is how I wanted to play NATAP. I wanted it one and done and be done. Okay? The earnings were terrible. So I told the chat room, Watch for the poll on NATAP right here. NATAP. This will pull at the open to 45.50. 45.50. Between 45 and 46, it's going to go. So right in the middle is 45.50. And when it pulls, you can bounce it right back up and then fade it. If it pops at the open, short the stock. So I gave them two ways. So if a trader, if it was going to pop at the open, Oh, short it, short it, short it. Because the stock is coming down to 45 to $46. No ands, ifs, or buts. Even though it's gapping down 10, it doesn't matter to me. It's still coming down. And I want you to see what I did. You ready? Ding, 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 ding. Short the open. 45.50. Bottom curl. It went up two points. Isn't that beautiful? When you know where the stock's going to go, when you have the conviction that we do, where we actually put it in writing, you can pick any trade on the list and make money. And that's the beauty of Awesome Calls Trading. All right? So I want to thank you for joining me today on this great webinar recap. I hope you had a great week with us. I ended Friday with a wonderful news from my son. I ended the week with a great trading day. Uh, I, I traded actually just Boeing and uh, I'll tell you what I traded. Uh, uh, here's my charts. I traded Boeing, OLED, and uh, I'm still holding R-E-S-T-W-O-U. And I am holding uh, Neo, of course, on my swing. So... Um, I own. I added it on my RES. I own it at 605 now, so that's why I'm holding it. All right. Other than that, traders, I want to thank you for joining us. Got a lot of annuals this week. I was really happy, and uh, more coming. And uh, thank you for joining us. I look forward to trading you on Monday. Earning season is just beginning. I mean, we still have lots to do, and uh, but today's list was 100%. And I look forward to you joining us. All you gotta do is click here. And twenty five dollars for a day, hundred for a week, and six dollars and seventy five cents for a day for a monthly subscription. I look forward to trading with you on Monday. Thank you so much for allowing me to trade with you, and uh, be good, be well, and be blessed. Take care. Bye bye.